Hello, once again, it's Joe the CRM chap here with a brand new video in my series all about Microsoft Exam MB400. So if you're a developer and you're building and extending solutions on top of either Dynamics 365 Online or the Power Platform, this may be the exam for you. So in today we're going to be focusing our attention towards the Dynamics 365 Web API. Uh, now this gives us the capabilities to communicate with the application from virtually any location. So it could be maybe our bespoke application, another system. What the Web API does is give us a fully compliant OData endpoint through which that we can interact with the system. We can create update records, execute operations, do a whole bunch of really great and useful stuff. Um, now, as with any Web API, you typically you need to make sure that you've got the appropriate permission and authorization to connect into that. So what we're gonna focus on in today's video is how we can um, get into the Web API. What do we need to do to set up to get authenticated, authorized into the Web API? So we can see at the moment we're in the PowerApps portal, but we actually need to move away from that. In, uh, when it comes to authentication, um, all of this is managed and set up from within the Microsoft Azure portal. So if we click on the tab up here, we, or we navigate to portal.azure.com, we can see we get all lots of different options on here. The one we're most interested in is Azure Active Directory. So we're gonna click on that first of all. Again, a whole bunch of different options. The one we're most interested in is something called an app registration. So this will give us the appropriate um, settings and configuration um, and permissions to basically get into the application uh, when we try and authenticate in. So uh, with that click to click on new registration up there, I'm going to call this MB400. Uh, I'm going to leave this as default. It could be that maybe if you're wanting to connect from, a, uh, from a, a, an external app to direct, uh, Azure Active Directory tenant that you might need to look at one of these options, but in most cases this one here should be sufficient. And then because we are connecting from a specific application later on, uh, which, I'll, which, we'll, which we'll see, I need to give a redirect URL. Um, now typically this will be for your web application that's connected to Dynamics 365. Um, but in our case, because we're running things locally, we can just get away with just using HTTP uh, localhost as our redirect URL. So with that all configured, we click on register down, down below. And pretty much straight away, we've got our registration ready to go but we need to actually configure a few additional settings on here to get it working um, how we want it to. So first of all, we need to give it the relevant API permissions to get into the application. So we go to API permissions down here, click on add permission over here. We've got a whole bunch of options here covering a range of different Microsoft services. The one we're most interested in is Dynamics CRM down here. And then we just click, tick on the box where it says user impersonation, click add permissions. And then that's that's in there now. So now our app, when we're calling our app registration, we can get into Dynamics 365 Common Data Service as an organizational user. So um, you know, as a user in the application with security privileges and all that sort of stuff, and I can do those operations as if I was that user. Now at this point, we there's an initial step that we need to do. We need to make sure that this API permission has been given admin consent. Otherwise, when we try and work with this, we're just gonna get errors. So because I'm already a admin on this tenant, I can just click on admin consent over here and then confirm that like so, and then that's all ready to go. So it might be in your particular organization, you might need to get in touch with the relevant persons or persons who have got those permissions just so you can get the relevant um, uh, consent granted on that. And then the final thing we just need to make a small tweak to is the app registration manifest. Specifically, uh, we want to make some changes to this setting down here off to allow implicit flow we just want to change this to true like so then click on save so that's all good to go now um, the only thing we just need to grab now is our client ID because we're going to need this in a few minutes so I'm just going to grab that and I'm just going to pop it onto my clipboard uh, over here so we can use it in a second now as I've said already typically you connect to the web API using your own application uh, for the purposes of today's video, we're actually we're going to use a tool which we've seen before in, in previous videos. We're going to use Postman. Now, Postman's a really great tool for being able to test and mock up you know, a whole array of different web API calls just to make sure they're working before you start to you know, develop for real. So I'm going to click on down here just to get my Postman um, application open up. I've already created a collection on here to store all the various web requests that we're going to do. And the first thing I need to do is I need to set up an environment and the environment is going to define the settings in order for us to get into Dynamics 365, uh, specifically the discovery URL as our first port of call. So I click on the gear icon at the top up here, 
and then click on add down here. I'm going to call this MB400. And then from here, I can start populating out the various different variables. Um, so first of all, we need the URL. Um, so because we're in the UK, um, connected to the UK, um, well, I'm from the UK, uh, we're using CRM11 as our um, uh, region, discovery URL region. Uh, it will typically differ based on where you are. So for example, uh, Europe is CRM4. Um, you know, so just check the documentation to make sure you've got the correct one for, you know, for your um, tenant's location. Next, we need to pop in the client ID value that we just copied from the portal. So just going to grab that, put that in like so, do a little bit of copying and pasting here. Next, we need to define the version for our web API. Uh, so because we're on the latest version, it's going to be 9.1 that we want to use. And then now we need to build out the URL. And the good thing about this when we're building out our um, environment values is that we can use parameterized values in order to basically build out your know, full um, you know, full URL. So, so for example, um, you can see on here um, by using uh, double curly braces like so, I can reference other variables that have been declared already to build out a completely new one. So, I'm, so in this case, I'm taking the URL that we've defined on here, I'm appending this little bit on here, and then finally, I'm adding the version number at the end of it. So, this can be quite handy. Um, you know, keep in mind, you know, this feature and use variables to your benefit when you work with personal. Next, we need to define the callback URL. So this will be the local host that we um, popped in for the uh, redirect uh, URI a little bit earlier. And then finally, we need our auth URL. So this is going to be where the um, where Postman connects to in order to generate our access token into the application. And again, I use a parameter, uh, a variable on here to basically, okay, I want to make sure that I'm given a token that's got the appropriate authorization to connect to this URL up here. So that's all looking good, so I can click on add like so. That's all been created now. Close that down. I want to change my active environment to the new one that we've created, and I do that by clicking it like so. And now we can create a, a request. So at this point then, we need to go to add request down here. I'll just call this MB400 test, like so. Now we're not actually gonna build the actual request itself in this video, that'll be for next time. Uh, so what we're just going to look at now is how we can get the access token um, you know, for any specific request that we're building or mocking up. So first of all, we go to authorization up here. We select OAuth2 as our option. Uh, it's going to be an access token that we want to be able to get and add it onto the request header. So if I click on get new access token like so, there's a few different settings I can basically um, populate in. Uh, it's already um, saved it from when I was doing some testing earlier. So we just give it a name that's useful. Um, we want to make sure it's always set as implicit as our um, grant type. And then we can see on here, we're referencing the environment variables that we declared earlier. So a callback URL, or URL client ID, that's all being get gotten from our environment details. So that's all looking good at this point. So we can just click on request token. Um, now what happened is that um, you didn't see it just then is um, an interactive login prompt loaded up. Um, I was then able to, using that, you can then log into the application using your Office 365 login details. And then once that's all done and you've got, and it's able to authenticate in, it generates your access token like so. And then you can just click the use token button, then that will be included as part of any requests that go up into the application. So provided your Office 365 account has got permission to get into, to access Dynamics 365 instance, you can then go on from here connect to the discovery URL, execute your batch operations, do whatever you need to do to get um, get all hopefully, um, to get working with your web API, basically. So that pretty much wraps it up for this video. So hopefully you've seen here how we can get set up ready to authenticate into the web API. In the next video, we're gonna take a look at how we can use the discovery URL to work with different instances and identify the one that we want to connect into to perform additional operations. So all it leaves me to say is thank you for watching the video. Hope it's been useful. Uh, please like, subscribe to the channel if you like the videos. We're trying to do these fairly off, often now, um, you know, across not just MB400 but other topics as well. So really appreciate your support and uh, uh, you coming along for the ride. Um, so all it leaves me to say is take care. Have a great day.